Yeah, you're on mute. Okay, now? Yes. Okay. So, okay, so for my presentations, usually I would have an icon where I would like you guys to participate as well. And it would be the let's chat icon where if you see that one in one of my slides, feel free to go to the chat function and just type away whatever you feel and we can communicate as well. For me, I'm you know, learning in my journey and I'm in no way a like psychologist or a therapist, but I do do as much reading as I can and I do you know, like to listen to people and their stories and experiences. And here I am uh, sharing my experiences with you guys and sharing what I've done, the research that I've done with you guys. But I also would like to hear from your experiences and just make it like a two-way street so that we can continue to have a conversation about these. And this is a community that I like to create between us. And I hope to, you know, keep seeing you guys again and we'll continue this, this community of ours. But today, because it's about teamwork and we are a team for tonight, at least, at least for tonight. I have an additional icon. If you've been here before, you've never seen this icon, so it's brand new, it's called Mic On. And if you see this icon, I encourage you, I implore you to participate, switch on your microphones, and we're gonna play a game. Of course, depending on the time, time permits to play a quick teamwork game that would require your microphones to be on. You don't have to switch any cameras because it might zoom in on you too, you know, and it's super awkward, but it would be great to have your microphones on. I'm going to play a quick game later on, okay? Okay, so this is my agenda for today. We're going to talk about teamwork. The first thing is I want to talk about why teamwork is so hard. Right? What are some of the struggles that we're facing in the first place? And why is this even a topic that we have to discuss? Number two is we're going to learn something from the animal kingdom. We're going to learn about the geese. And you're going to see the geese all over my slides right now. I like to make my slides pretty and have a theme to it. So today's theme is seeing a lot of birds and flocks and them flying in the V formation. And there's a lot to learn from the geese that we're going to learn today and I'm going to share with you what the various elements are and it'll, it'll be cool to learn something from nature and apply it to our, our lives here in the, in the concrete world. And then if we have time, we're going to play a game and you're going to see the icon to switch your microphones on and it'll be great that if everyone participates, all eight of us. And finally, I will share a little bit more on the elements of a success in addition to what I'm learning, already learning from the geese. So let's keep going. So the first thing is I want to talk about why teamwork is so hard. So let's just take a pause here and think about the last time you were in the office or you know you are working in, in another environment like in your clubs or in different societies. So you have to work in a team and you found that it was a little bit of a struggle. And I've personally experienced that as well and I'll share a little bit more uh, later on. But I feel like Psychologists, as I've, I've researched, they believe that it is a universal need for all humans to actually feel like they belong. Contrary to what people believe, we actually want to work together. It is our human nature, it is in, instinctive to humanity to work together, to collaborate, to support each other. That is actually part of our nature. However, psychologists have also shared that sometimes we are just not predisposed to working well with each other. As much as we want to, as much as we know that it is important, we just don't work well together, right? So it's one thing to want to do it, but then it's another thing to make sure that it is a smooth process. So I've identified two key reasons. Of course, these are not exhaustive in any way, but these are two key reasons that I feel that we might have a struggle with you know, teamwork. So the first reason is that it is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. So what is a dog-eat-dog -dog world? So this refers to a situation of fierce competition where people are willing to harm each other in order to succeed. And I mean, this is the environment that we're living in at the moment, where we're, we're always thinking about performances, we're always about how to help the economy. So when we're living in this fast-paced, competitive life, what do we produce? We produce people who are a little bit dare I say, selfish. We are more interested in self-promotion, self-protection, 
and working independently. Because what we believe is the only way to the top is to trample on other people. Is you are only in my way for me to get to where I want to go. So this is the reality of the economy that we've built and the competitive lifestyle that we are so used to almost, you know, we are kind of oblivious to at this point because it's basically day to day. Even in school, even with your kids, I'm sure that when they go to school, it's such a competition sometimes. Hi, Ra. Sorry. Is our internet okay? Yeah, it is. It's connected. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, internet access. Let me try to change my... Okay. Technology, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm gonna blame it on the rain. Okay, so it's already on. I've been on a new um on a new connection. Okay, share. Yes, okay. It should be better. Oops, I'm sorry. So where I was just saying, okay, so even in school, the students also face some sort of competition and it's just innate in our economy, innate in our environment that we have to face this every day almost so that it becomes part of our nature to be competitive and to believe that the only way to the top is if we get the people out of the way. Another possible reason, so I'm just going to put it all under one topic, but I think within this personal and individual ambitions, there's a lot to unpack here. So I would like to say that when we are in a competitive environment, we are also ambitious. And really, there's nothing wrong with being ambitious. Actually, ambitious people, they have a winning mentality, which I believe I have. You have a winning mentality and you always want to push forward. But sometimes when you are overly ambitious, you wanting to get ahead can actually be at the expense of the team's morale, right? You are prioritizing the need to go ahead to accomplish your goals more than what your other team members feel, including the leader. So what they say is that people who are very ambitious, they are motivated by the pursuit of power. And so they are people who are most likely to challenge the leader authority and compete with other team members for status, which is, I would say, a very toxic environment to be in when you have a member in the team who feels like the competition is within the team itself, and it shouldn't be, right? You are all on the same team, and the com competition is external, and it should be against somebody else. It's us against them and me not against you. And sometimes when you are overly motivated and overly ambitious, you kind of lose sight of that, who's actually in your team. And it's like, I'm not your enemy. I'm on your side here, and we have to work together to get ahead. So there is point of advice here. If you find yourself overly ambitious, which I certainly do, is to kind of take a beat, for instance, just to you know, take, take a moment to realize that, again, the competition is not here with me. It is actually within, it's actually outside. It's actually external. And to channel your competitive nature, which is great, outside and to make sure that I'm gonna channel all of this to make sure that my team succeeds together with me because if they succeed, then I succeed. So these are two ideas again that we believe could result in making you know teamwork very difficult. Of course, there are many different other reasons such as personality clashes, different working styles and different communication styles even. But I would just like to lump that up uh, under just you know personal differences and you know one of is having different ambitions, different levels of ambitions. So now I want to share a little bit of a personal story. Of course, everybody has a personal story. For me, I work in an environment where, work, where I work with different departments all the time. And sometimes I feel like the struggle comes in me working with other women, other 
girls. And there is this expectation, maybe, um, you know, it's stereotypical, but the expectation that when you are a team member and you are a female, you should be a little bit more gentle, right? You can't be very assertive. You can't be aggressive by any means. You have to be soft. But for me, I'm a person who is a go-getter. I am very, very detail-oriented and I follow everything in my timeline. I follow the budget sheets. So I'm very, you know, everything line by line I'm, I'm following uh, to, to the T. And sometimes that routes people the wrong way. And I had to get to the root of the problem. I had to find out exactly what is going on and how we're going to resolve this between me and the other girls. One particular girl, but, you know, this happens, you know, several times. And I always want to get to the root of it to understand why is this you know, a problem and how we can resolve this in order for us to move forward and to finish up the project, to finish up the campaign and make sure that we are both enjoying coming to work, right? So we have to get to the root of the problem of what it is. So me being me, you know, I ran to the bookstore and I tried to grab like a book that could possibly help me. And I would like to share with you this beautiful book. It's so cute. It's, <laughs> it's like coral and pink and it says, Lift as you climb, and this is by Viv Brosko, Women and the Art of Ambition. Now, this book is basically a Bible. It's a self-help book for you to find a way in which you can get ahead as a woman. You can get ahead. That means you want to climb the ladder. So that's the climb part. But at the same time, you want to lift other people as well. So yes, you want to move forward but you don't want to leave anybody behind. So this book has great tips on how to create this sisterhood of people supporting each other, but also importantly, not disadvantaging yourself because certain times people want you to compromise so much that you have to be more of this, you have to be less of that and you don't feel free to be who you are and that could affect your advancement in work. It can help you. It can also affect your satisfaction and your happiness at work. So I do want to share with you. So this book basically segments uh, all the topics into climb and lift. So how you can climb, for instance, is be aware of how people you admire or respect handle failure and also to be very realistic or to get comfortable with your deepest fears. So she does list out what are the ways that you can climb and then she also lets you know how you can lift how you can help other people lift by leading by example by being open about your mistakes and failures or praise other people for admitting to mistakes and encourage a culture of learning and accountability so this is a great great book and for me this helped me to just put me back in check of, of like myself and why am I always going, 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 and I'm not looking around how, what my working style is, you know, doing to other people and how it's affecting to other people. And I had to look into myself and say, do I want to help others? Do I want to lift other people as I'm trying to climb to the top? And the answer is yes. I don't want to hurt anybody along the way. My success is not incumbent upon your failure. In fact, if you succeed, I succeed as well. So she has a brilliant quote. She has many, many brilliant quotes in the book if you want to check it out. But she does say at the end, she says, be reminded of all the women whose shoulders you stand on, all the women who have done anything to make your life easier, and all the women who are waiting to help you only if you reach out. And there is more support inside of us waiting to be gifted to others than we ever imagined. And this really just opened my eyes to like, whenever I feel like I'm just, you know, trailblazing, this path was, was carved by the women, the great, the great women in my company who paved the way for us to even have a voice in the company. So who am I to just be selfish and feel like, okay, this is my territory. No one can get get in my way. There were many people before me already. They were nice enough to welcome me in and help me out. And it is my duty and it's my responsibility to do the same for others. So it's just important to pay it forward. And when you have this self-awareness, and this is important to have self-awareness, as we mentioned in many of the workshops before, you know that you can't really compete with other people who are within the company who's trying to help you achieve your goal. In fact, you have to help yourself, yes, but it's also important for you to help them so that they can help the situation and we can all get ahead faster and further. Okay, so now 
the fun part where we get to learn from the geese. There are many, many things that you can learn from the geese. I just want to explain why I choose the geese. So the geese, they migrate to escape winter. So they have to migrate from one place to another. I think in, in Canada, they do this uh, in order to escape winter. And the roots of their migration don't change. So every year is the same route. They have the same goal every year, which is fascinating. Even though members within the flock, how shall I say, change, the roots don't change. They all know exactly what to do. So this is some things that we can learn from the animal kingdom that comes naturally to them. As I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, that psychologists also believe that it is actually quite natural to us as human beings to also want to collaborate and to want to work with each other. So I've identified five different elements of teamwork demonstrated by the geese, and they are empowering others to lead, focus on the collective goal, have humility to seek help, stand by their flock in good times and in bad, and they support each other. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to stop share for a second. I am going to copy these five elements into the group chat. Hello. I've copied all five there, so you guys can take a look at them. And I am going to do a little guesswork, or like you can play this game if you want to, okay? So the next section, um, you will have the Let's chat icon. So I'm gonna share with you what the geese do, okay? And you're gonna let me know which of the five elements this represents. So the five elements again are empowering others to lead, focusing on a collective goal, having humility to seek help, stand by the flock in good times and in bad and to support each other, okay? So I'm gonna show with, I'm gonna demonstrate to you some of the things that the geese uh, actually do. And then you let me know which of these five uh, they're representing in terms of teamwork, okay? So the first one, as each goose flaps its wings, it creates uplift for the following bird. That means the one that comes after it, making it easier for the other to fly and most importantly, to conserve energy by drafting off each other. So what this means is that when I'm the goose in front, I will flap my wing and this will actually help the person or the bird behind me to get the lift. And so it's actually easier for them to fly. And this helps them conserve energy and this helps them also move forward faster. So I want you guys to let me know which element this represents. Is this representing empowering others to lead, focusing on a collective goal, having humility to seek help, standing by their flock in good times and in bad or support each other. So I'm gonna go into the chat room and see what we have right now. Supporting each other, number five. And you are absolutely correct. Well done, well done everybody. It's supporting each other. So with teamwork working together, with a team working together, you can reach a common goal and the group will usually gain momentum first starting off by the leader, right? The leader will usually, you know, set the direction and that is kind of like the first push. We're gonna do this. And they're usually giving you enthusiasm, giving you great encouragement. And then the team is lifted up by this first push and they start pushing each other. So everybody start sharing how they can develop strategies, how they can share, you know, their action plans. How can we move this forward? How can we, you know, do things more efficiently? So they support each other. So I'm gonna do something first. I'm gonna push something first, and then you follow suit. And that's how we continuously starting to support each other. Excellent job, excellent job. Okay, the next one. Whenever a goose, falls out of formation. It suddenly feels the drag and resistance of trying to fly alone and quickly gets back information to get the uplift it needs. Which one is this? So you're left with four more options. Is this empowering others to lead, 
focusing on collective goal, having the humility to seek help, or standing by the flock in good times and in bad. So can you imagine, like you, you've got this ride, and then suddenly you get out of the, the formation of the V formation, and you feel, man, it's hard to fly on my own. So you try to get back into formation, and you realize how much you actually valued the lift that the other geese have given you. So I'm going to go into the group chat. I'm going to say what your answers are. Number three, you have humility to seek help. Are you guys looking at my answers or? <laughs> Is it a? Yes, have humility to seek help. Sometimes, sometimes again, we're all ambitious people and we all have our goals. And so we kind of want to like, deuces, I want to I wanna bounce out of here. I want to do my own thing. And then you realize how hard it is to kind of do things on your own, right? And how much value the others had given you, how much their contributions were actually important for you to achieve your success as well. So sometimes people drop out of a group and try to accomplish goals on their own. However, they will find that they need the synergy and collaboration that comes with being a part of a team. And I know you guys know the saying that if you want to go somewhere fast, you go alone. But if you want to go somewhere far, you got to go together. And I think that's true as well. Have you ever been in like a creative like group meeting and then you go in? Okay, I'll, I'll tell you my story. I will go into a creative meeting and I, I have like the most amazing idea ever. And then your teammates start like building upon it and then it becomes even awesome and like things that you never even thought. And like, I'm like not even like, like offended that they try to change the idea because it has morphed into something greater. And that's really the power of collaboration. That things that you cannot think on your own when you're sitting in your room, that just really isn't a way. So really I value collaboration and the geese, they do too, apparently. Okay, next, next thing we can learn from the geese. Geese can reach their destination quicker and expend less energy if they fly together in V formation. In fact, the whole flock extends at least 71% more flying range than if each bird flew alone. So empowering others to take the lead, focus on a collective goal, standing by the flock in good times and in bad. Hmm. Interesting, like I said, if you were to venture off on your own, how fast can you get? But if all of you are working together, you can actually get there 71% faster. Specifically 71%, not 72, huh? 71. Okay, so let's see what your answers are. Number two, absolutely correct. Focus on the collective goal, right? Everybody wants to go in the same formation. Everybody wants to escape the winter. Everybody wants to stay in this V formation. That is a collective goal. And as I mentioned earlier, this goal doesn't change, my friends. This goal is the same every year. Even when the birds have babies and they want to join the flock and they want to migrate, they still have that same collective goal. So people who share common goals and a sense of community can get to what, where they want to go faster and easier because they are traveling on the strength of one another, right? No need to explain further on this. I think we all know as well that it's important to, for the leader especially, to kind of put it on the forefront. This is our goal. This is the level of commitment I need from every one of you. This is the urgency. You know, if it's if it's an urgent thing, this is the urgency because it's nothing quite like everybody kind of knows the goal, but then, you know, some people is like, I'll do it tomorrow, but then others like, I kind of need this now because this is dependent on that moving forward and that moving forward. So it's important to not only focus on the collective goal, but to also establish how significant, how important this goal is to everyone, or if you're in a company, to the business itself. Okay, we're doing well, we're doing well. I think we are on, okay, this is not the last one. When the lead goose in the front gets tired, it rotates back into the formation and allows another goose to take the leadership position where the drag is high. Meaning, I'm the leader goose, lead goose, now go to the back. The person who goes to the front will suddenly have this huge drastic change in the drag. Drag is like the resistance, right? The resistance, because no one's lifting you in front. So you are kind of like facing everything uh, 
up front, front and center because you are the leader. So this one again, let's check out the chat group. Number one, empowering others to lead. Excellent, excellent. Yes, so you encourage not just other people, but of course you encourage the leader as well, whoever's in, 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 the, in the front to, to lead. And it's important to also be you know, motivating to other people and giving them the opportunity to shine you know, to be the one to kind of take the lead, the lead role and use their strength and capabilities to take the team to a direction maybe that it's a little different from the previous leader. If everybody's the same, then what's the point, right? Usually somebody who is different, who has a different perspective, will take you into a different, um, a slightly different direction. No wrong or, or right way, it's just a different style. And that's when you open your mind to how things you know, can, can work differently. And sometimes the outcomes can be very surprising. And finally, so we only left with one left, so you know what this one is. Geese honk, <laughs> they honk, I'm sure is the sound, to recognize each other and encourage those up front to keep up with their momentum. When a goose gets sick or wounded, two other geese draw out of formation and follow it down to help and provide protection, staying with it until it is able to continue flying or it ultimately dies. So we only left with one more. I'm sure you guys know what this is. This is of course standing by your flock in good times and in bad. It's so easy to celebrate when you know when it's when it's a great times, right? I'm, I'm always there for you. You know, we're gonna go out drinking, we're gonna celebrate. But it's usually when the times get really hard, when it's a struggle, when you have to work till midnight, kind of pull things together. That's when your relevance and your importance come to the fore. This is when you want to see what exactly can you contribute? You know, are you solutions oriented? Are you a complainer? That's when people get to see who who's what, you know, are you going to rise to the occasion or are you just going to, you know, mope around and make things hard for everybody else? So it's important to also stick by your team and kind of make sure that you continue to be supportive, you continue to be, you know, um, able to have a real contribution to the team, right? To so stand by each other in difficult times. And when things get difficult, when people are facing challenges, that's when your relevance as a teammate comes to the fore. Okay, so we have some time, I believe, to play a little game, okay? So this is when I need everybody, if you, if you may, to switch on your microphones. So we are going to play a game that I played in drama class. And this is a game that will test our synergy. So I've been speaking for the last 35 minutes. So you kind of know my style right now. I'm just kind of like talking, talking, talking. And what we're gonna do is we are going to count from one to 20. It's a simple virtual team building game. There are many team building games, but I cannot do it from across the screen. But this one we can because we have tried this in drama class. So what we're going to do is we're going to count from 1 to 20, okay? And we have to count it in the order, of course, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. Now, anybody can say, anybody can say any number at any time, okay? In the event that two or more people say the same number at the same time, we have to restart again, okay? In my drama class, when the first day we met each other, it took us about 15 minutes to get through this one game. At the end of our class, after about two months we spent together, we were able to do this at one try, where we all were able to say a number and it not clashing with somebody else. So is everybody ready to play this game? Okay, we'll switch on our microphones. I can see who has yes. gone. Let's do okay. this. Nalini, Ayin, Anthony, Jacqueline. Let's see your microphone switched on really quick. I can see who has not switched on. Okay, Sihan, thank you so much, Sihan. Nalini, Ayin, welcome, welcome, welcome. Anthony Wong is a little bit of a interactive, interactive game, okay? So we're gonna start again. You can say any number at any time. If somebody says the same number at the same time, we're gonna restart. 
one. The only objective is to count to 20. <laughs> is to count to 20. Okay, Felicia, la, very good. La. Okay. Okay, somebody can start. Two. Three. You have to say louder because I cannot know if someone clash. Three. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, we're gonna restart. We're gonna restart. One, two, three, four, five, three. <laughs> <laughs> we're counting to 20, okay? Okay, we're gonna restart again. One, two, three, four. four. Oh, oh. <laughs> let's restart. One. Two. Three. Four. Ten. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Mm -hmm. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Yay! Well, well done, team. We win. Very good. It only took us about, what, six tries? Very good, very good, very good. Okay, so this is just a simple team building game. You can do it, you know, in person as well. It's all about finding, you know, connection and synergy to make sure that I know you're going to say it, so I'm not going to say it, or, oh, no one's going to say it. I'm going to take the lead. Simple game, okay, simple game. So now we're going to go through the elements of a successful team. Once again, thank you guys for the participation. I really, really, really appreciate it. So the first element of a successful team is, of course, jeng, 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 communication, right? Even that, that short game that we played was also about communication, right? Basically, it's about giving the people space to speak. I'm not going to interrupt you and you're not going to interrupt me in a very profound way, of course. The game was trying to teach us that, was that I'm going to let somebody else take the lead. I'm going to say, you know, let someone speak. But then if no one is speaking, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say something and in, in order as well. So communication, of course, is super, super important in, in having a successful team, right? But communications in terms of what? Communications in terms of setting the standards, setting expectations, delegating well, defining roles. This is what you're gonna do. This is what the goals are. This is the urgency, the level of urgency that I needed. It's important to communicate all of this to the team and making sure that everybody is aligned and everybody is on the same page. And also do know that communication again is a two way street. So I really appreciate you guys switching on your microphones. It might be a shock for you guys today to have to participate, but I really appreciate it because it's not just about me talking, but it also would like to hear from you guys whether you are engaged. So communication is a two way street again, not just about talking with someone, but also having a engaging discussion and that involves listening to be to able to listen to not just the ideas but to also be able to listen to their concerns you know is there any problems that they're currently facing and to be honest to have an open communication between the leader the supervisor the manager with their team when they're struggling or feel like they are not being fulfilled at work i'm going to work and i'm not feeling satisfied or i'm not get along getting along with this person is there a way that i can resolve this can you help me can you support me having all these these very difficult conversations are also very important in communication so i do want to point that out right so communication again is not just about you telling people what to do or to share share with people all the, the good things that you know we're, we're already accomplished, but also to have those very difficult conversations because only when you're honest with yourself, that's when you can be truly happy, you can be truly satisfied, and also you can gain trust from one another, which I'll talk about very shortly. And next point, the next element that I also want to bring about, because this is usually the source of frustration for us in some teamwork, 
right? When we feel like somebody is not doing their part, but let's be honest here, right? We all feel like I'm doing this much and this much, but this person is not pulling their weight, right? So having accountability also is really important. I just want to put this into my slides and to just solidify this, that I am with you. If you feel like you are in a team and that somebody is, you know, kind of causing this tension, it's important for you to identify it and then to address it, right? Not attack them. If there's something that you feel is, you know, really unfair, it's important to, again, communicate and to express how you feel and then to find a way to solve this, to understand what is it, why do you feel like, you know, this is all that you can do at this point? Are you overloaded? You know, are you completely overwhelmed? Are you lost? Are you unclear about objectives? Are you unclear about the timeline? So again, to make sure that when you identify a problem, you hold that person accountable, including yourself. If you feel like you're not pulling your own weight, if you feel like you're really slacking off, be self-aware and then be honest about it, right? As a union, the team members collectively have to encourage each other to focus on the, the common goal, to constantly put that at the forefront. This is what we need to do as a team. And you know, everybody have their own little ideas here and there, but to make sure that at the end, we're gonna streamline everything to make sure that we reach whatever the common goal is and also to support each other, right? To support each other who may not understand the importance of the desired results. Again, important to communicate to them. My boss told me a very important thing recently, but she said that I know how it feels like to feel like certain things can be done better if you just did it, right? It's easier, let me just do it. But that person is not gonna learn anything. And number two, it's not your jurisdiction to do something. If it is your duty to communicate to this person that, hey, I think that there's a better way for you to do this. Or if you feel like you're being overwhelmed at this point, maybe it's time for you to speak to the manager about, you know, offloading a little bit of your work so that you can prioritize and you can do this. But to just take that responsibility away from them and say, never mind, I do myself. It's not really going to help anybody. But remember, that yes, you want to climb. Yes, you want to climb the ladder. And yes, you want to prove that you can do everything. But you also have to help your team members because only when they are successful and when they are effective, that you as a team can also be successful, okay? So don't just do everything. I know I myself struggle with that all the time where I feel I can do it faster, but it doesn't help anybody. And it also just stresses me out even more. So it's better to just nip it in the bud and just to tell them, this is how I feel in a professional way, not in a friendly way, in a professional way saying that this is affecting my KPI and I need you to do this and that in order that I can, you know, have this campaign complete in a very successful way and also make you look good. So again, communicate and accountability. Number three is delegation. So this is not just about telling a person what to do and, and so on, but also as a leader or also as a team to identify what the strengths and capabilities are for everybody. Everybody have different strengths. I, I guarantee you. That's why you know a company hires different people, right? It's important because some people are better at digital, for instance. Some people are better at creative writing. Some people are better at client management, right? Facing, uh, client facing. So again, to assess and capitalize on the strengths of each team member and align skills and tasks that match their ability, right? At the same time, I also believe that it's good to challenge somebody and to put them in a, in a spot where they can grow. Because if they have a, a spark in it, if they have a small potential in a role, sometimes you can also even volunteer to say, I want to try something different. It is not within my wheelhouse at the moment, but it's an experience that I want. And I feel like I'm going to learn as fast as I can and also contribute with a unique perspective if you already give me this opportunity. So delegation, again, based on skills and strengths, but also someone's willingness to expand their horizons and to try something different, right? So just conclude that utilize unique capabilities within the team and allow the team members to focus on tasks that suit their abilities and experience. And also just to add on that, if somebody wants to try something different and they feel like I can learn a little bit more, I can, I wanna challenge myself to try something different, also to give them the opportunity and delegate accordingly. This is also an important one, especially when we live in Singapore. You know, we are, you know, we have so many people of different backgrounds that, you know, differ in race, differ in religion, and differ in skill sets, our gender roles, our levels of education, and also our position within the company, right? What we have been entrusted upon. So it's important that as a team, you see this as a positive, not a negative, right? The fact that we are different is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's about leveraging 
everyone's uniqueness, everyone's unique skills and perspectives in life, not just about like the skill set that you brought from your previous job, but how have you experienced life? And to use that perspective to perhaps solve an issue in the company in a different way. It could be solving a existing concurrent re recurring issue in a different way or to solve a new issue that you never even see coming. Because you know, our landscape is constantly changing and within the company, there's always things that are you know, coming up and you know, there are new problems that you face always. So if you feel like your old you know, solutions are not working, then maybe it's time to tap on you know, people of different backgrounds to get their perspective on things. If it's you know, something that is racially sensitive to make sure that your team is diverse enough that, and have a diverse number of, of voices to express you know, how certain things should be done, right? Not just to be you know, monopolized by one voice and this is how we're gonna do things, but no, I wanna hear from everybody and how they can be you know, contributing to this and how they can look to solve the issue together. And when there is a lot of diversity in the team, it's also important to respect it, right? Mutual respect is fundamental to any successful team. It really is, right? Because we are different, I wanna respect you and I wanna understand you. When you have respect, that's when the team is able to move forward and trust each other, which is the last and final point. Trustworthiness is also important. Trust in terms of what? Trust in terms of everything. To be honest, when you're at work, okay, you're spending most of your days there. Most of your life, to be honest, are with your teammates, right? I see my teammates more than I see my family sometimes. So you have to make sure that you can trust these people, right? Trust in the abilities of the leader and the team, okay? So you have to make sure that you are genuinely able to look away and know that some things are being done as they should be. Trust that they will support you. So this is important as well, because if ever you feel like you are, you know, you are standing at the at the precipice of a ledge and you're about to fall and that no one is going to catch you, you're never going to take the jump. Right? You're always going to live in fear. You're never going to take any risks because you feel like if I fall flat in my face, that is it. I am out. But know that when you want to try something different and you want to pursue something as a team, everybody's going to support you on your wildest ideas and it's going to be okay. Worst comes to worst, we know that we tried something different and we know that it doesn't work. So we're all learning together. So support is also really important. Trust that this is a safe space to be free and to be creative. And this is important, especially in my industry, where we actually have brainstorming sessions that can go on for half the day. So if I don't trust my team, that they will be open-minded enough to my silly ideas. And we, we get crazy sometimes that they wouldn't make fun of me, that they wouldn't think of me you know, in, a, in a degrading way, that they won't discriminate against me because I'm a female, they won't discriminate me because I'm of a certain race or certain religion, that they're open to hear me out. That's important so that I can go into there with an open mind and an open heart to just share everything that I feel, that this is a safe space, that whatever I say can stay here. And you know that this is a professional setting in which I'm just speaking my mind to make sure that we reach this common goal that we have. And finally, to trust in your teammates that they will carry their own weight and follow through and that they will be doing what's best for the company. So this is just trying to make sure that you believe that no one is out to get you, that there's no mole in the, in the company that's trying to sabotage everything because you constantly have to look you know, behind you. You have to you know, always check yourself. And again, this, help, this really inhibits your ability to just be free and to be yourself because you're constantly you know, on, on, on edge about what people are going to think about you, especially what they're going to say about you behind your back. So trust is really, really important. So again, I just want to um, highlight what the, what the elements are, including the ones from the geese, okay? We're going to just recap everything from the geese to empower others to take the lead, to focus on a collective goal, to have humility, to seek help, know that it's okay, to stand by you know, your team in good times and better support each other. And also to make sure that there's very good communication, open, honest communication about the 
the great things as well as the difficult conversations that we have to have to make sure that you yourself also hold accountability to what uh, to what output that you bring to the team, as well as other people also accountable to what they do in the team, to make sure that you delegate and that you support other people should they want to do a role that's slightly different from theirs, their current ones, just to challenge themselves and to be supportive in that, to respect and, you know, to embrace openness to diversity, right? When there's someone different in the team, that's a great thing. That's something that you can use as leverage against your competitor because they may not have that perspective. They may not have this difference that's going to help you make something that is out of the box, that's creative because, you know, your team is, is you know, from all over the world. It's representative of, of the society that we're living in. That's the goal, right? In your company, I hope it is well represented, okay? And if it's not, make a change. I, I support you to make the change. And the last one, to make sure that there's trust within worthiness as well. And that also links to having an open conversation with your boss and having an open conversation with your teammates to say that I'm, I'm pouring my heart out here with you. You know, it's human to human. I'm sharing with you some of my thoughts and my personal feelings. And I, I'm trusting my, my feelings with you. And then they will do the same. And they will also reciprocate. When you open yourself up, when you are vulnerable with other people, they, they will tend to be vulnerable with you as well. And we are good on time. We are almost there. One final slide that I would like to share with you. And it is, you know, one of the most famous American poets. I'm sure you know who it is. This is Maya Angelou. She is an American poet and civil rights activist. And her perspective on, on teamwork is also great, you know, when you want to make a change in the world, you simply, simply, you cannot do it alone, right? So I just want to go above and beyond about talking about teams at work, but about making a change in the world. This is her perspective. She says, I do my best because I'm counting on you, counting on me. So thank you guys so, so much for joining me this evening. I hope you learned a thing or two, if not from me, from the geese, okay, from the animal kingdom. Of course, these slides and this presentation will be on YouTube at some point, so do check it out. If there's any other concepts that you wanna check out, you can also reach me at Instagram, at Rosazlin, R-O-S-A-Z-L-I-N, and I hope to see you guys again next month. We can talk about anything, you know, I, I don't even know what the topic is at this point, but if there's something specific you want me to talk about, you, know, you can reach out to Speech Academy Asia, you can reach me at my Instagram, and of course, I can prepare something for you guys. I hope you guys had fun. Thank you so much again for participating earlier on. I'll try to incorporate more interactive activities that we can do together moving forward because this is again a two-way conversation i'd like to hear from you guys as much as i'm just hearing myself talk all the time okay thank you guys so much again i hope you have a great evening and have a great the rest of the week Mwah. bye